Well, I'm down in the lower garage tonight. Uh, a couple reasons. One is to get the wagon upstairs because this project is finally going to get underway. Two is I guess to move the Hoonicorn because I need to get the red M3 out. Uh, I gotta fill that thing up with some fresh gas for the winter and there's a, a car show tomorrow that I think I'll take it to as an excuse to do that. Uh, the overnight low temperatures aren't quite cold enough where I uh, <laughs> can't drive it. Uh, the car doesn't have heat, so that's always been kind of a problem, but first things first, I gotta move the Hoonicorn and then uh, I'll probably pull Brexit out. And then uh, once that's done, I'll probably pull the 5 Series where this car is and then I will grab the M3. Well, there we have it. Uh, Brexit's upstairs. The dailies parked down here. Unicorn started up and moved. I actually just replaced the battery in it because that was much faster at this point. I think that battery might just be toast at this point. Uh, I'm going to start up the red M3, take it upstairs, and then lock up down here. But then I'll uh, head upstairs and start moving around. i got to move the Ferrari to get the wagon on the lift. So it's going to be a, a little bit more yet. And just like that, the wagon's upstairs, Ferrari's tucked neatly in behind it once again. I don't know if I want to put the pan on that engine first or if I want to start working on this thing first. I think the answer really is I don't want to do either first, so I guess that means oil pan first. But you do want more on the first Well, for the first time in several months, this engine has an oil pan on it. Although I was realizing while I put the pan on that for whatever reason I haven't tapped this one for an oil drain, so I'm not doing that tonight, but I'll grab a fitting next time I'm at home and go over exactly how I do that. Next step, take the hood off this thing. Well, it's up in the air. It's time to drain fluids. Luckily, the drain plug is very accessible for the oil pan. And it is on the very small non-air conditioning 3, uh, 318 radiator as well. So I'm going to pull all that apart. i uh, debating whether or not to pull the lines off the power steering pump or just pull the pump off. I'll probably pull the lines, even though it's going to make a mess. Uh, I think I'm going to be retaining both of those lines for the six cylinder. So lots of stuff to nut and bolt here, but just going to start plugging away and see where we get so that's what's in the radiator on this car. Some light macchiato. Oil pans all drained. Power steering lines are disconnected and still draining because those always keep draining. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna start loosening some hose clamps on the cooling system now to relieve some air pressure so it doesn't keep doing this. But uh, making progress. You can see the damper bolt and the main engine mount lower bolt. There's going to be a ground strap up in there somewhere on one of the two sides. Oh, this side. Four cylinder cars are a little different apparently. Um, exhaust. I've actually never done an M40 car before, but there they are. Just four main collector bolts. Slave cylinder, even though I just put that on from the Hoonicorn, that's coming back off. Bunch of 17 millimeters for the flex disc, that comes off. 13 mils on the center heat shield. The cat back on this car is just absolute trash. Um, but really not a whole lot of stuff on the bottom side that has to be taken off or removed, which is kind of nice. So there's the coolant bucket, which was full of clean used coolant before, and now it's brown. So we took like a whopping maybe gallon total, probably less of coolant out of it. So it was pretty low. So I'm going to pull the locks now and let her back down and start undoing some stuff on the top side. I will say there's a whole lot of extra room when you don't have the two extra cylinders. There's definitely a little bit of a coolant leak, but uh, everything's coming apart really nicely. Fuel lines came off, uh, vacuum line, whole airbox and whatnot came off really nice. Um, even the rubber was in pretty good shape, so really no complaints except for clearly having not run coolant in it. Just straight up water. 
Um, running pretty low on stuff to do top side. It's just a couple more electrical connectors and then where the harness goes into the car is not a whole lot of fun because that's actually, even though it's a right-hand drive car, it still goes in to the right-hand side of the car, so it's kind of underneath the gauge cluster. So that's probably going to be one of the more time-consuming things left um, as far as pulling the engine is concerned. Bottom side, I kind of showed you all the bolts I'm going to have to deal with. really isn't too much there. so We will see. Uh, I do kind of want to pull the front timing belt cover just to see what kind of shape the belt's in and to look at it because I've never seen uh, I've never seen one of these in action before. Since it's a Euro only engine, we don't really get these in the States in anything. So lots of fun stuff. So the harness is out sitting on the engine. Pretty much everything. I guess I gotta pull this out of the way, but I'm actually replacing the throttle cable. I was able to order a E34 525 M50 cable, which should be an, a completely direct bolt in for this. Um, motor mount came apart pretty easy, except uh, the actual aluminum arm was snapped. I'm not sure how long that had been like that, but didn't appear to make much of a difference. Ground straps disconnected, power steering's disconnected, fuel lines disconnected, heater core lines disconnected, vacuum for the booster disconnected. Both the uh, engine mount dampeners are disconnected. Only stuff now is really taking the slave out of the trans, which is a three minute job, taking the drive shaft off the trans, which is similarly short, and then like shifter linkage stuff, which is, it really depends on the car. Everything has come off this thing like it's never been apart which I believe with the wonky nature of a lot of the original components like that 1990 radiator. <laughs> and a huge mess everywhere. I don't know. I'm probably going to put it back up in the air now and just keep wrenching until I basically fall asleep. We'll see. Didn't get much sleep last night, but this stuff is pretty cathartic and very easy. Well, I can't find a load leveler or a chain, so we're using a $2 Harbor Freight ratchet strap. Worst thing that can happen, uh, nobody cares. So, gonna jack this thing all up out of here. Everything came apart just super nice on this car. And here we are, another minute later. That was definitely the smoothest engine pull I've ever done, so. Definitely some things to attend to in the engine bay. Still have to swap engine mounts, take the old dampers off, kind of size some stuff up. I do have to change over the brake booster to something that'll clear the manifold on the turbo engine. Just lots of little stuff here and there. Uh, underneath, I will have to swap out the drive shaft to a, a different bigger unit. I'll probably be swapping the diff because this car is a small case differential, which <laughs> those blow up without a turbo on an S52. So again, there's things to do, but considering Brandon was just telling me that I drove this car in here under its own power two hours ago, I'd say we did all right. <laughs> so that's, that's probably all for tonight on this car. Um, definitely will be a lot more parts of this project to come because I'm anxious to get it out there hooning uh, before snow flies. Not sure if that's a realistic goal, but we'll aim for it. Well, that only took like five minutes.